Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll show you how the U.S. Meat Export Federation is working to create opportunities for U.S. beef in Central and South America, plus see how John Deere equipment is making a positive impact for one Missouri operation. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hi everybody and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Russell Nimitz. Well, as the voice of the cattle industry in Washington, D.C., the National Cattlemen's Beef Association fights for producers in Congress, in the courts, and at the White House. NCBA staff focus on the important issues so members are free to take care of their business back at home. We've got an update on what's happening in Washington in this week's Beltway Beef Spotlight. Hi there, I'm Danielle Beck, Senior Executive Director of Government Affairs for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, and I'm excited to be bringing you an update from our Washington, D.C. office. As you may know, there's quite a bit happening uh, on Capitol Hill, and our lawmakers are debating several key pieces of legislation at the moment. They are struggling to deal with how we fund the government for a full year, how we address the debt limit, which we're about to hit, scheduled for October 18th, uh, and how we move forward on several pieces of important legislation, like a bipartisan infrastructure framework and a longer, bigger budget reconciliation piece, which is part of uh, President Biden's Build Back Better agenda. The NCBA office has been fighting for our producers on a host of different fronts. In the bipartisan infrastructure plan, we've secured critical flexibilities and relief for our livestock haulers, which is a really important provision that all of our members will benefit from. There are also significant investments in broadband and a host of other priorities that NCBA aligns with. On the other hand, though, the reconciliation package, which we know has a host of human infrastructure investments, uh, we've been really concerned about what those pay-fors will look like, and we've been fighting to ensure that those provisions are not paid for on the backs of our farmers and ranchers. There's a $3.5 trillion proposal moving through the House, and it's going to require about $2 trillion worth of tax hikes. NCBA was successful in preventing stepped up basis from being on the chopping block. Stepped up basis would be preserved if this bill were to become law. The same thing with like kind exchanges, which we know is another critical provision in the tax code that our producers rely upon. Right now, it's unclear what the path forward will look like. There's still a lot of negotiations happening. There could be changes made to the reconciliation bill in the rules committee in the house, or the Senate could take that up and make amendments. Right now we're in a really good spot, but we are asking all of our producers to engage to ensure that changes aren't made to the death tax, uh, to the stepped up basis, to like kind exchanges, and so many other tax provisions that our producers rely upon. If you're interested in engaging, please visit policy.ncba.org. Uh, that's an easy portal to allow you to reach out to your members of Congress directly on these issues. In the meantime, please stay tuned, keep listening to uh, Beltway Beef, our podcast, and follow policy.ncba.org for updates. No doubt what happens in Washington can certainly have a huge impact on our farms and ranches across the country. We asked producers at the recent cattle industry convention and in CBA trade show what message they would like to send to DC. I guess my message to Washington DC would be uh, less regulations for agriculture. Uh, remember that we are feeding the people. Come out to our place and, and see what we do and see how we live and see how we treat our animals and care for them. Uh, you, you know, we take pride that we feed the world, that we're on the ground doing what it takes to keep a hamburger in front of you, to keep corn in front of you, to keep, you know, we're, we're, we're cattlemen here. But it's not just about cattlemen, it's about all ag producers across the U.S. And, and we need a strong ag industry in the U.S. because I don't want to be a slave to some other country where we're forced to have to import, especially under the COVID crisis that we've seen and so forth. We need our food here in our country and to be able to feed our people and to be able to produce enough food to share that with the world. 
The message I would like to send to Washington, D.C. is that as cattle producers in the United States, we are such a diverse population of people, uh, but we have a, an intimate connection to the land, an intimate connection to the environment, and that uh, it is the way that we produce food to feed the public, and we need to be allowed to continue to produce food in a sustainable, economically sustainable way and environmentally sustainable way, and that as uh, politicians please come visit producers to see the good job we are doing. Now, if you'd like to stay up to date on all the key issues and events out of Washington, D.C., one way is by becoming a member of NCBA. And to join, just call 866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead, We'll take you inside the U.S. Meat Export Federation's Latin American Showcase and explain how this event is helping to improve beef exports. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Grass is the center of our universe. We've got to have a grass program that we can count on and plan on that's what we need to sustain us, to keep us growing, to keep us prospering. If you're looking for outstanding forage developed Angus cattle, look no further than Yon Family Farms in Ridge Springs, South Carolina. The Yon family is hosting their 18th annual fall sale on October 30th at 11 a.m. on their farm. They're offering 250 bulls and 100 females. Proven genetics from a family committed to their customers. Find out more at yonfamilyfarms.com. This beef quality assurance tip is funded by the Beef Checkoff. Hi, I'm Dan Buskirk beef extension specialist with Michigan State University with a beef quality assurance tip. Using the injection triangle in the neck eliminates beef product defects in more valuable cuts of the carcass such as the top butt and the round. And blemishes in the neck are more easily trimmed or easily removed at harvest. Always administer injections according to the manufacturer's labeled instructions. And when the label allows the choice of route of administration, choose subcutaneous over intramuscular to further reduce the possibility of injection site lesions. The lower boundary of the injection triangle is above the cervical vertebrae in the middle of the neck. The upper boundary is below the nuchal ligament, which is two to three inches below the top line. The posterior boundary of the triangle is in front of the shoulder. Regardless of the age of the animal, do not give injections in the rear leg or the rump. Make certain everyone on your team is BQA certified and uses the injection triangle. For more information on injection site management and record keeping, visit BQA.org. The Beef Quality Assurance Program is funded by the Beef Checkoff. Well, it continues to be a banner year for beef exports Thanks in part to the work of NCBA, the Beef Checkoff, and the U.S. Meat Export Federation. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter has more on a special event put on by USMEF that helped to create new opportunities for U.S. beef in Central and South America. San Jose, Costa Rica was the site of the 10th anniversary edition of the U.S. Meat Export Federation's Latin American Product Showcase. This event brought U.S. exporters together with buyers from 21 countries across Central and South America and the Caribbean. This is my first time here at the Latin America Showcase and it's really, been really impressive to see the number of people that are here, the number of people that are here, companies and also looking for clients and customers looking for new meat products. What I perceive is that everybody is very um, enthusiastic about the show. The results are, what people are telling is that they are very happy with the results. Uh, having the opportunity to meet face to face all the exporters and all the people that they make business with, 
know what are the new trends, see new products, uh, and just even just talk to them because they have more or less like uh, two years that they hadn't been able to get together. And I think the results are going to be amazing. I have been to every single one of these uh, USMEF uh, product showcase from Colombia to Panama to the Dominican Republic to Puerto Rico, I've been to all of them and we've never had a bad show. We've always got to meet our present customers that we already sell to and we've gotten to meet new customers and we've never gone away without making a new sale. It's been excellent. The showcase offered plenty of time to make business connections and to look over the variety of beef products available from the U.S. The Latin American buyers were also given a presentation on sustainable animal agriculture as well as a beef cutting demonstration. They had a uh, demonstration here on uh, utilizing the U.S. cuts and uh, it's amazing to me to see that they're working just as hard as we are to try to add value to some of the cuts that uh, may be prepared a little different way, adds more value. and. In fact, just visiting with one of the uh, people with MEF uh, uh, just a little bit ago, talking about this is a very high priority, is adding the value to the carcass uh, uh, through uh, innovative uh, cuts and innovative ways of cooking those cuts and preparing them. Our team at USMEF has done a great job getting the right people here, the right buyers here to introduce them to our our packers and and it's great because you talk to any packer that came here today any trader that came here any member that came here today and they'll say you cannot duplicate this in any place else this is a one-of-a-kind show more than 130 buyers attended the latin american product showcase which was funded in part by producer checkoff dollars you know it has been really beneficial i think especially uh, to see what's being promoted down here, how it's adding value, particularly taking maybe cuts we may not use in the U.S. We were actually just visiting with one of the vendors and they were talking about tongue and how the meat they're getting from the U.S. is so much more tender, even in that product that we wouldn't use so much in the U.S., right? So beyond just steaks and the things that we use and promoting that here, it's been nice to see some of those other value-added pieces that is just contributing to increasing the carcass value, right, through that additional opportunities. You know, we're not exporting a whole carcass any place. We're exporting cuts. It's the best cut for the best place. You know, and the price point of different places is different. So it's really neat that we have the ability to send culottes down here and we can send short ribs to Asia and, and tongues to other places and livers and that's what we're utilizing the whole animal so we're getting the best dollar back for our producers at home. With increasing retail demand in countries such as Costa Rica, U.S. beef exports to Central and South America are up sharply so far in 2021 and that's welcome news for U.S. beef producers. In Costa Rica, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about the work of the U.S. Meat Export Federation and its efforts to enhance beef demand overseas, just visit their website, usmef.org. Still ahead here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you how John Deere equipment is making a difference for one Missouri operation. We'll have that story coming up next, so please stay with us. From the very beginning, Richie has been dedicated to one thing, helping people deliver fresh, constant water to their animals. Today's Richie waterers rely on a valve design that remains much the same as it was in 1921. It's a simple idea, do it right and the rest will take care of itself. We never set out to create a company that would be around for a hundred years. We just wanted to create something great. Get more from your mower conditioners with John Deere Zero Series Mower Conditioners. Cover up to 10% more acres per hour with the wider cutting width of the C500. Cut time changing knives in half with quick change knives. Mow with confidence thanks to our five year cutter bar warranty. Get more productivity, tractor compatibility, uptime, choices, and confidence with John Deere Zero Series Mower Conditioners.
You know, having the right tools and equipment makes any job go faster, which of course saves you valuable time and money. Brian Baxter takes us to Missouri for a look at a cow-calf operation there that relies on John Deere equipment to help get their work done quickly and efficiently. For as long as Mark Ingeman can remember, cattle have been a part of his life in eastern Missouri. We've always had cattle ever since I was little. Um, never know anything different, honestly. So uh, it's just a family tradition that I'd like to pass on down to uh, my kids. In addition to the cattle he owns with his wife and parents, Mark grows crops on 2,800 acres with his father and uncle. All the hay they raise is used as feed. Speed and performance are critical when it's time to put up hay, which is why John Deere has been the equipment of choice over the years for Mark's family. In fact, Mark recently had a chance to try out Deere's new 5125M utility tractor. It's going very well. They were used to maybe bigger, heavier machinery, but I think we proved that a, um, the largest of the 5000 series is an, is an option for uh, kind of a part-time type of producer put a huge a lot of hours on but needs a, a powerful tractor and I think this is fit the bill. I'm used to um, six and seven thousand series tractors so going to a five was a little daunting but it's held up to the task so far. The 5125M is very spacious for as small as the cab is it is very spacious inside. I was really surprised with that the panorama uh, roof window is nice for seeing that up high and looking to see where you're going to stack that next bale. So it, it, is, it is helpful. Mark is also a fan of the 5125's Power Quad Plus transmission, which makes it easy for the operator to find the right speed thanks to clutchless push button shifting between gears. It's very handy uh, on that go of you know picking up a bale in the field to uh, grab in another gear with the hay cutter. You can just it's a click of a button on the to your right hand side or well actually there's three different spots to to adjust uh, gears in between the quad ranges. But uh, it works really well. Um, it's quick. It's reactive and um, it's user friendly. Honestly. The 5125M also comes with auto track guidance. This factory installed option reduces implement overlap, which means fewer passes through the field. Most think, well, this is ridiculous. You don't need auto track for, for cutting hay, but in fact, it does make you more productive where you're putting in the consistent width um, and then the uh, laying off land. So keeps a tractor cutting hay instead of trying to cut little pie shaped fields. Um, no little swats across the, across the field until you're completely done. Uh, that also, uh, you can follow those swats, the perfect swats, with a rake, and you're raking hay onto a place where there's no hay, so it all gets turned, so you get that thorough drying and no wet spots uh, that could cause mold in bales. When they brought this out, I was like, really, we're going to use auto track in a hay field? This is going to be a little interesting in the hills of Missouri. But uh, I found a few fields that works, and uh, it worked out great. With all of the hay he puts up, Mark is a believer in the value of using a disc mower conditioner to cut his crop. We are currently pulling an S300 uh, John Deere MoCo um, with a flail impeller on the back. Um, the uh, quick change out knives option is great this year um, for swapping out those knives easily enough and um, not having to get a, a ratchet out and a pry bar to hold that uh, disc blade. And um, uh, it's a great machine to utilize when I need to go out to cut hay. When you uh, get done with the hay field and it looks as good as your lawn, I, it's a great day for me. Mark's local John Deere dealer can easily relate to the challenges he faces because the Seidenstricker family has their own Angus cattle operation as well. And over the years, Mark has seen that Deere continues to work hard for its customers even after the sale by offering support seven days a week. Our customers are usually out there in the evenings and weekends, so they rely on our support team to be there also. So we do have a dedicated service department and we have protocols in place for uh, weekend call out and parts availability uh, on the weekends, which is truly important to our customers. I would say um, whether it's uh, cattle or equipment, 
or you know uh, whether it goes to even employees they, it, 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 it works it has to work for us to uh, uh, for everybody to make a good fit because uh, we've got so many irons in the fire to uh, to feed and uh, it, it just has to work for us I can never uh, say enough about John Deere equipment they are proven usually time and time again for us and um, for our operation for our herd it uh, it works for us they work hard at Ingeman Farms to get the best performance out of their cattle, and they know John Deere equipment helps them achieve that goal. Reporting from Missouri, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how John Deere equipment can bring value to your farm or ranch, just visit your local dealership or check out the website johndeere.com. Well, deciding what to do after graduation is still one of the toughest choices a person has to make. And for many, they end up finding jobs away from the farmer ranch where they grew up. But some instead do go back home and work with family. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Kate Maher has more on a Virginia cattlewoman who was excited to return back to her roots. In the beautiful Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, Margaret Ann Smith is out early in the morning feeding calves. Margaret Ann was born and raised in a beef producing family, so it's no wonder she ended up with a career in agriculture. I am the sixth generation at home, at our home place there. I farm with my dad and my brother, my grandmother, and my three-year-old nephew. When I left here to go to Kansas State in the late 90s, I probably never crossed my mind to ever think of anything else but coming back home. I've probably known that since I was a small child. This is what I always wanted to do was come back home. Once she graduated from college, Margaret Ann returned home and created Southlex Cattle Company, which works alongside her family's other cattle and farming operations. Southlex sources high quality feeder cattle from the eastern and southeastern parts of the U.S. and sends them to customers across the country. We have customers that vary literally from a cow-calf producer that is needing some extra cattle to supplement their own herd to finish out for their silage piles or whatever that you know may only buy one tractor load a year and then we've got guys that are running thousands upon thousands. Those cattle we ship into about 22 states from literally from New Hampshire to New Mexico and it'll be anything from a little roping calf to a 900 pound cut and bull and we're just filling orders for customers. In addition to buying and selling cattle for her customers, Margaret Ann also runs her own backgrounding program often buying high-risk cattle that require extra management and care. We buy high-risk cattle because there's a lot of opportunity available with those cattle, and opportunity to upgrade those cattle, opportunity to improve on those cattle. Those cattle um, typically are the genetics will be there, will have the genetic background, but they won't have the management component. So whether it might be a lax vaccination protocol, it may be an elderly person who doesn't have the ability or the infrastructure to do those things, but it's an opportunity for us to upgrade those cattle and make them to what the industry needs and wants and desires and is more marketable by upgrading those cattle and pushing them forward. Margaret Ann's passion for the beef industry is obvious and she is a firm believer in the value of the beef checkoff. She's pleased with the checkoff's efforts over the years to educate consumers and build trust in both beef and those who produce it. Those are things we as producers don't have the time to do and that investment of a dollar a head is pennies compared to what it would take if we went and took our own time to try and educate consumers and stay in front of them. You know, the resources on the web that we provide through the checkoff are unbelievable. If you can't find it about beef, it, and it's all there because of our checkoff. Knowing the importance of supporting the industry that supports her, Margaret Ann has also volunteered with several state and national ag organizations over the years. She's a longtime member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and appreciates the work NCBA does in Washington, D.C. on behalf of the beef industry. And I can't run to D.C. every time we have an issue that needs to be approached. Even though we have great relationships with our state delegates and our state senators and our, even our congressional delegation in D.C., we need those folks boots on the ground every day that are there advocating for us. It is truly a great organization. I know I'll always be a member. In early 2020, at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Margaret Ann was one of the producer voices in a series of videos from NCBA called We're In This Together aimed at helping provide some comfort and unity to farmers and ranchers during those uncertain times. 
and I was very honored to be asked to kind of feature what we do with the livestock marketing and what we do here in Virginia. And that was a really cool opportunity to, you know, be a little, hopefully maybe a little bit of a bright spot about, you know, what was a really trying times of, you know, we, we are, we're all fighting for this and we're all trying to get forward um, and get through the other side. At the end of the day, the most important thing for Margaret Ann is doing what she loves, caring for her cattle to produce beef. I think we have an exciting future, especially when we see the things that we are the number one protein and we are preferred by consumers. We have to remember those are good things. Coming out of the chaotic year we've had, if we can still rank number one, that's got, there was at least one bright spot to this year. We must taste really, really good, and it's nice and comforting to know that beef is still preferred by consumers. Reporting from Virginia, I'm Kate Maher for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still ahead here on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll take you behind the scenes of a Cattlemen's College event that offered some valuable tips on cattle handling. That story is coming up next, so please stay with us. Are you ready for a better shot at profitability with a more consistent, more efficient cow herd? Then don't miss out on the maternal edge offered by GelbV and Balancer Genetics. Stability and longevity is really a strength of the GelbV breed. And you know, when these cows can remain in the herd 10 years or thereabouts, uh, they return a lot of dollars to the producers. Research shows GelbV cows will stay in your herd longer with greater fertility and more pounds of calf wean. It's the ability of that cow not only to have that calf unassisted, but to own that calf, to stay right there with that calf, to do whatever's necessary to get that calf going no matter what. No breed we work with does a better job of owning that calf and making sure that she's going to take care of the Gelfi breed. For cow-calf producers, the maternal traits offered by Gelfi and Balancer Genetics are the smart, reliable, and profitable choice. Find out more at the website gelfi.org. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Suprevo.com. There's new technology that allows us to manage livestock in new and innovative ways, and I'm with one of those suppliers today, the Gallagher folks. With me now is Buddy Rowlett and Ray Williams of Gallagher. Ray, tell us just a little bit about some of the exciting new apps you have for animal management. Well, over the past few years, we've been developing applications so the farmer can view all of his data that he, uh, that he collects at shoot site on his phone, or on his computer. And uh, it's managing your farm, it's managing all the aspects of all your metrics and making sure that you're making the right decisions. So in this particular piece here, this is our new scale that is simple, it just reads weight, but when you, uh, when you hook it up to an iPhone or to a, any kind of phone or iPad, it, it literally sends the weight right to it and then you can manage your data and your, your animal IDs right on the pad. So it, it, it gives us opportunity and flexibility to actually do more at shoot side. And there's also an application where it goes on to the, the cloud. Now I can share my information with all of my, uh, my employees and others that are, and I can be on vacation, still see what's going on at the farm by just checking in on my account. Pretty convenient. And buddy, I have to tell you that I noticed uh, this collar and I think I know what technology uh, this is going to provide. May, may save us a little time from a fencing standpoint. Tell us about this. Well, Kevin, this is something there's been a lot of buzz about for the last two or three years, and it's finally here. This has been a really hot topic for us this week. It's virtual fencing. It works from satellite. So you set up all your parameters to where you want your livestock on the farm, on your iPad or your phone via Google Earth, and then it downloads from a satellite. The cattle are outfitted with this collar and then as uh, they move towards those parameters it gives them an audible saying you're getting close to where you're not supposed to be and then it lets them know when they've gotten there so that's pretty exciting and uh, this is uh, solar powered is it it is solar powered so we don't have to worry about batteries going down 
or any of that, we know that it's going to last. With all the talk we have about sustainability and managing our resources effectively, I think technology like this is certainly going to allow us to manage our grasslands much better, won't it? Oh, absolutely. And we see a lot of use for it in the public lands where we can't build fence. And then we look at the problems with labor today and with getting supplies. We really feel like this is going to answer a lot of problems. And Ray, one other thing, uh, we have these load bars sitting with us right now. Tell us a little bit about the technology there. Well, the, the main problem with load bars, as you can imagine, is the cords getting cut or pinched in the, uh, in the rig, you know, in the, in the squeeze chute. So what we've done now is we've taken the cord off and put a battery on the load bar, then, and it also is a Bluetooth product that actually now commits to uh, a phone again. So if a person doesn't have a scale, they literally just hook it up on an app now and get up on it, and uh, they, they, they read the weight right there on their system. So it gives us a lot of, a lot of flexibility. It's, you know, you move your chute around and not have any concerns about getting cords and such. The battery on this is, is built in such a way, and there's such a small microampage coming out of it, so it doesn't really deplete very quickly. So we can get seven to eight years of, of battery life out of a load bar battery. So it's, it's pretty revolutionary. We're pretty excited about it. That is revolutionary, and you are demonstrating, as you say, the next generation of animal management. Now, if you want some more information about Gallagher, you can visit their website. That's GallagherUSA.com. Well, each year, attendees here at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show are treated to live cattle demonstrations. And with us on today's program is Dr. Ron Gill from Texas A&M University. And Dr. Gill, talk about what you guys are doing and showcasing here at the live cattle demonstration arena, you along with your partner, Kurt Pate. I mean, you guys are renowned cattle handling experts. Uh, talk about what you guys do every year here at convention. Well, we try to demonstrate some techniques that can improve cattle handling, but one thing we really try to do is maybe teach people how to teach. That's not our strong suit in this area. A lot of times we know how to do it. We expect other people to know how to do it. But being able to communicate what we're doing and why and how we want that to happen is a little difficult for most of us. So that's a big part of it. But if we can improve stockmanship, we uh, improve the health of the cattle, we improve the bottom line basically is uh, you can control shrink, sickness rates, and a lot of other things by becoming better stockmen. So we kind of go through all of that uh, part of it, but mainly it's just kind of understanding cattle behavior, learning how to read what they're telling you, because the cattle will tell you what you need to do if you're paying attention, but sometimes we don't pay attention like we should. So uh, part of just kind of repetition a lot of times on what we hear, we have a lot of people come back and really want to reinforce what they thought they heard the first time and then they add their experiences on top of that so it's interesting to see people progress over time in this area do you think uh, after people watch a demonstration like this and they go home and maybe try to implement some of what they learned either from you or or kurt they're like wow this is actually this stuff does actually work We've had people come back and actually tell us, you know, we, we were shocked. We went home and this actually worked. We thought y'all were fools when y'all were telling us that, but um, I've had that happen more than once. <laughs> so, uh, but, and I, I don't even mind that. It, just, if you're in a situation that's not working very good, go back, fall back on some of this stuff we've talked about and try it. And if it works, then add to it, build to it. Because you can always go back to what you were doing. And so most of the time it's kind of fine tuning maybe how we approach some of this. For people who have been in the business a long time, it's not earth shattering difference, but maybe a little tweaking here and there can make a huge difference in the way the cattle respond. I say this a little bit tongue in cheek, but boy, if folks actually implement some of what you guys are learning out here, it might actually keep a few relationships together out there on the ranch too. Well, there's a lot of life <laughs> lessons learned. If you're paying attention, there's no difference really in the relationship you build with livestock than it is with people. Uh, we learned that in the horse world with natural horsemanship, and it's all the same kind of context of pressure, release, learning how to read a situation. Uh, I, I use the example all the time, if your spouse is mad, it, they, <laughs> it never improves if you just keep pressuring. Yeah. And so you have to take the pressure off and let things cool down and, and reshape. And it, it's kind of an interesting uh, comparison a lot of times to life situations and what we do with cattle and learning how to communicate. Not any of us strong suit, but uh, something we have to do. 
Well, obviously we're doing this at convention uh, this year held in Nashville, but you know, throughout the year, you guys actually do take a lot of these uh, teachings and lessons that you're doing in person here at this year's event. Uh, you take them across the nation, and it's a great opportunity for folks that can't join us at the convention uh, to get to see and do and, 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 and see what this is all about. Yes, the stockmanship and stewardship events that we do uh, with Merck helping it get us around the country, those have been phenomenal to work with. One, we really get to emphasize maybe even a little more on the stewardship side of it, but we combine it with a stockmanship uh, component. But those regional meetings have been really rewarding for us and also hopefully the people that come get something out of it. We spend a little more time, go a little more in depth into what we're actually talking about here. I think we use the demo pen to kind of set up those kind of programs around the country, uh, whether we do them through the stockmanship and stewardship or local beef cattle organizations that bring us in. Uh, all of it kind of ties together and it's it's just a good good situation. We have a lot of effort put into those and a lot of quality. Yeah. Well, I mean over the years I've I've learned myself in different experiences that it's a lot better to have hands-on demonstration. I mean you can learn a lot with the in-classroom stuff, but there's nothing better than actually getting out there with live animals and, and hearing it firsthand from guys like you and Kurt that are actually doing it. I don't think it'd make it better if we get people in the pen with us so we could yell at them. <laughs> <laughs> really replicate what we do at home kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, there, there you go. Well, if that's what you want to experience, remember there are some regional stockmanship and stewardship program meetings are happening uh, later this fall across America from West Coast to East Coast. Get all the details online at stockmanshipandstewardship.org. And don't forget, if you were unable to attend Cattlemen's College in Nashville, or if there was a class you missed that you wanted to see, all of the sessions were recorded and are available for viewing online. Just visit ncba.org and click on the Producers tab for all the session details and pricing. Up next, it's time for a visit with the cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Stay with us, we'll be right back. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global. I'm here to help you do just that. Did you know that Prefort makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefort Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefort makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Some people are born with the music in them. Other people do good with algebra, throwing a rope or rebuilding engines. I am blessed with the music. I remember as a boy going back to visit in Oklahoma. Saturday afternoon, they'd have a musical. We'd gather at somebody's house and anybody that wanted to play could sit in a big circle in the living room, including the kids. The recognized first fiddle in the group would start playing. And then eventually he'd say, Bert, why don't you play one? And then Bert would graciously accept the invitation and play his favorites, then pass it on down. It went on for three or four hours. I started playing seriously at about 15. The old time fiddle music was a great influence, but I was also a fan of country music in my time. Lefty Frizzell, Hank Snow, Jim Reeves, Kitty Wells. I played in a weekend country band in college picked up an interest in bluegrass and Bob Will swing. I was so focused on what I liked that I missed Elvis, the Beatles, Bob Dylan, and the hundreds of folk and rock bands that were on the radio stations that I didn't listen to. Today, I recognize Mick Jagger and Bruce Springsteen and Madonna's picture, but I couldn't name a song they sang. My brothers are musical too. We each have our own style. 
And then somewhere along the line, I married into another Oklahoma musical family. Well, I've been schooling my son on the mandolin. Last month, he asked if he could switch to guitar. I said, sure. Next thing I know, he's in the bedroom trying to figure out Billy Joel's piano man. Looks like he's caught the bug. Truth is, he never had a chance. When you're born with the music in you, it's like breathing. Oh, and did I tell you the mandolin he's been playing for the last four years was Aunt Effie's. I think she'd think that's cool. This is Baxter Black from out there. The NCBA trade show is a great place to introduce new products and we're going to talk about one of those in just a minute. With me now is Kelly Whitman with Rotomix. Kelly, let's begin by talking to us a little bit about Rotomix, the company. Uh, Rotomix is a 37-year-old manufacturer of livestock feeding equipment, uh, manure spreaders, uh, really anything related into the livestock industry and feeding cattle. And you are introducing a new technology called AutoFeed here at this show. Talk to us a little bit about that technology. So AutoFeed came about, it's actually been uh, kind of in the works for a couple of years. The need to eliminate a skilled driver has become more important every day. And so what we did with our AutoFeed system is it uh, is designed to work with our ration delivery box or the RDB. So what we're doing is with controlled input, with bunk length and call weights, we control the ground speed and our conveyor discharge speed to put out the, the required pounds per feet per bunk foot to try and make the call weight by the end of the bunk and eliminate backing up of the truck. That's phenomenal. So, so literally, as long as I know the bunk length and the amount of feed, it calculates it for me internally and it will drive the amount, the, the speed as well as the rate to deliver that amount of feed. Yes, uh, the bunk length and the call weight is strictly all we need to, to discharge as close to the call weight as possible. It's not gonna be perfect every time. You have, there's so many things going on with truck scales, uh, a rough terrain kind of affects scales. But uh, yeah, we can pre-program the, the ground speed whether or not the spout opens every time, we can control the height of the discharge door, and it's all programmable, and it's all remote accessible from our engineering department through telematics. So you don't really have to be a feed truck driver to, to operate this, is that right? No, you don't. If you know how to drive the truck, and you can drive along the bunk and can hit two buttons, you can drive this truck. So the, the, the last question, I mean, does this technology work on some of your other products? At this time, it does not. Uh, we do have plans in the very immediate future to adapt this into our rotary mixers like our 920s uh, and possibly down into our 720s and 620s. Very good. Well, thank you so much. That's exciting technology and certainly solving a need for an industry that is a challenge to get capable, skilled, experienced people to deliver feed to cattle. We appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate you guys. To learn more about this new technology, visit Rotomix. Dot com. We've gone to Texas for CattleCon 2022. The cattle industry convention and NCBA trade show is the oldest and largest event in the beef cattle industry. And we're headed to Houston, February 1st through the 3rd. The Space City is a melting pot of culture, art, and some down-home Southern hospitality. Everything's bigger in Texas, so you can't afford to miss the massive NCBA trade show. This is your best opportunity to network with fellow producers, learn, and simply have a blast. Engaging speakers, outstanding education, all for the beef cattle industry. So let's get back on track as we've gone to Texas for CattleCon 2022 in Houston, February 1st through the 3rd. Visit convention.ncba.org for more. 
Cattle producers across the country work hard to care for their animals and their land. The USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service is there to help. Find out how you can work with NRCS to develop a conservation plan for your operation. Find possible funding resources for implementing conservation practices or get free expert advice on ways to improve your farm or ranch. Visit the website nrcs.usda.gov today. When the field is your office, you never get tired of going to work. Cut, rake, bail, repeat. New Holland offers the power and versatility to get through the day. From small squares to large squares and everything in between, New Holland has you covered. Visit your local dealer today to find out more. New Holland. Time now for Weather Watch with meteorologist Matt Makins. Hope this weather watch finds you well. Let's talk about September. We had some notable changes for the Pacific Northwest, which was great. But then when you look at the drought conditions, we saw notable in a negative sense of drought growth in parts of the plains. And I'll pinpoint those areas for you. Then we'll have the October outlook. How will things change based on September? And honestly, quick aside there, October does not change much from what we recorded in September. Here is September in terms of rainfall. These green blue shades for the Pacific Northwest, much, much wetter than average. In some cases, by at least 400% or so of the average. And those extreme coastal areas were the wettest. But then right next to it, very dry from Montana down into California. Hit and miss areas of moisture for the northern and central plains. Still a swath of some decent water came from southern Nebraska, South Dakota through Nebraska into uh, western Kansas there. But then you hit Oklahoma and Texas where it was incredibly dry for the month of September. The east and the southeast, there along the Gulf Coast states, some tropical tropical systems and remnants of tropical systems spread quite a bit of moisture that way. As far as temperatures, vast majority of the country was warmer than average, especially the Rocky Mountains and the High Plains. October does not change very much from what we just recorded in September. Let's chat about the drought changes and most notably look in here, Oklahoma and Texas, but mostly in Oklahoma. That's a class two to three degradation in drought or drought growth in that area. Very rapid growth. Eastern Colorado, drought has intensified. Texas, drought intensifying. Where we saw some great news was isolated, but sections of South Dakota, North Dakota and Minnesota had some improvement. Not much improvement there in Iowa. As far as soil moisture is concerned, still very dry for the vast majority of our growing areas. Very dry in the Corn Belt. Most of our hay areas are dry as well, with the exception of the Southeast. So soil moisture, we need a lot of water to improve that soil moisture outlook. Let's take a look at the outlooks for October. Again, like September, most everyone warmer than average, drier than average for the Southern Plains, so look for further drought growth in Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado. A little bit of moisture for the Pacific Northwest, and off to the east, we'll see some wetter than average areas in October. I'm Matt Makins, that's this week's Weather Watch. Quality beef begins with trusted quality nutrition. And that's exactly what you get with the Kent Group. Now with us on today's program is Dr. Brandon Cook, the ruminant nutritionist. And let's talk about uh, your, some of your guys' uh, products and programs because there really are quite a few options out there for cattlemen and cattlewomen. But let's dive right into it, Brandon, and talk about your Framework 365 program. Yeah, as you mentioned, there's a lot of options across the industry and, and quite frankly, we even have quite the gamut as well. But I love that component of us being able to, to help cattlemen, whether you're on the commercial side, five head, 500, or you've got an elite seed stock, we're going to be able to service you and provide what you need. That is some great news. Now talk about some of your performance minerals that you have available. Sure. Well, well, we just came out about a year ago with a new performance framework 365 line based off of our classic, really successful successful base mineral program of Framework 365. And some of these products have just another step of nutrition to provide for those performance-minded cattle, the ones that you're looking to get a little bit more out of. They've got a little bit more genetic potential. Uh, I think we can all agree that cattle in 2021 perform a little bit
bit differently than back in say 2000, let alone 1980, right? So uh, one that I've been having a lot of fun and success with, with, with cattle men and, and cattle in the industry has been uh, performance sure-footed. It's uh, based on a really basic, good quality level nutrition from framework ADE. And then what we've done is we put in a full rate of Zinpro's Avela Plus. We have great levels of zinc, of copper, of iodine in there, along with our basal high rates of vitamins A, D, and E that cattle just react really well with. You know, it'd be crazy for cattle producers not to embrace some of this new and exciting nutritional technology that's right at their fingertips. Let's talk about your formula for embryo transfers because that's awful important too. Absolutely. As we get into that breeding season, most producers understand there's some benefits to, to increasing that plane of nutrition and, and even the mineral program, that's where it really counts. And so we've got a couple performance minerals, whether it's Performance Full Flush or Performance ET Elite, which is that top tier, not a better mineral on the market right now with a lot of components that are gonna help with room and health, with energy utilization, making sure that cow's in good body condition score, and then taking care of her mineral needs and vitamin needs with ProPath 4 and high levels of vitamin E. We've talked a lot about some great mineral programs that you have available here at Kent, but you know, in reality, it's not just about a one month or two month program, is it? I mean, we've got to embrace this and 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 use it year round. Absolutely, I think that's uh, spoken very well in the framework 365 day name. Uh, it's built from January 1 to December 31st, and then it's not just mineral. Uh, there's no question mineral is the backbone, but when you work with a company like Kent that provides quality and trusted nutrition, you get the mineral program, you get the protein supplementation, and you get the service from, from people like myself and, and my coworkers in the field to provide you with, with what you need to be successful every day of the year. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you joining us here on Cattleman to Cattleman today. Thank you, sir. And, of course, at Kent... It's all about quality animal health products that you can trust, guaranteed, and for all the details, visit them online at kentfeeds.com. Now, if you'd like to catch up on anything you might have missed here on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, be sure to visit our YouTube page. It's got replays of all of our shows, which of course are filled with educational segments along with industry stories from across this great country of ours. So check out and subscribe to the Cattleman to Cattleman page on YouTube. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. As always, we appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us. And we'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.